So I've got Raza and Jordan from Human Loop uh, to talk to you today about their company um, and about the working with UCLTS. So guys, thank you for taking the time to, to chat. Um, I've got a few questions that I'd like to sort of run through. So the first one, um, can you tell me about how Human Loop was born, um, where it came from, how the idea sort of came about and, and, and where you've taken it to today? Yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe I can kick off and Jordan, you can, you can jump in as well. Um, I think it's really a coming together of a few different groups of people who've been thinking around the same problems. So myself and Peter and David at UCL had been sort of talking about startups, talking about starting something for a while. We've been doing some industry work. So both myself and Peter have previous startups and David does a fair bit of consulting. And we'd been noting the same problems again and again of issues with sort of data annotation, being a bottleneck in the deployment of deep learning, with deployments taking a really long time and often stalling. And we were thinking about how we could use our research to go out and solve these things. And then Jordan and I have been friends for years and he was in EF at the time, thinking about very similar things. I mean, Jordan, do you want to jump in here? Um, yeah, so pre uh, previously I was working as a researcher at Amazon and I was dealing with problems there about data scarcity, sort of how can we deploy Alexa into new languages and working on that machine learning pipeline. And I went to EF, which is a company builder, to um, find a co-founder. Um, unfortunately, in this case, I didn't actually find someone within that cohort that I thought was great and we could work on this problem together. But um, Raza is a friend from a long time ago and we were also thinking about similar areas. So we... Yeah, so when I, when I found out Jordan was on EF, I was like, what are you doing on EF? Come, come, come work with us. And I was like, Raza, come do EF. Which me, I tried to approach him. Eventually, we, we, we joined up in one way or another. And the timing felt really right as well. So specifically for, for natural language understanding, there's been a bit of a step change in the last couple of years in what's possible. And there's a whole range of automations and sort of applications of natural language understanding that two or three years ago just didn't feel like they would work. And they do now. And as soon as those start being adopted, we just see that this is this problem of data scarcity and annotated data becomes much bigger. You'd be surprised the kinds of people who are annotating data. I mean, I've met Goldman Sachs bankers now annotating for chatbots, um, lawyers, doctors, really expensive, talented people inside companies labeling for NLP. And it's just crazy. So we wanted to use some of our research to go and solve that. Great, great. And, and so, uh, where have you taken the company? So the company's not been around for very long, but uh, you've made huge progress. So can you tell us a little bit about where it, where it is now? Yeah, so we, we kind of started having these conversations I described in January, but the company itself was really birthed properly in March with, with myself, Jordan, Peter, and then two professors from UC as well, David and Emine, um, David Barber and Emine Yilmaz. And um, so we started the company properly in March, but we initially spent our time speaking to customers. So we didn't really build things initially. We wanted to figure out, given our view and thesis of what the problem was, how it meshed with a lot of different people. And about two months ago, we started building a first prototype. And we finished that only three weeks ago. And since then, it's been, you know, already it's been quite fantastic. So we've got people showing a lot of interest. We've got a POC potentially with Deloitte in the, in the pipeline. We're working with another large law firm and a, and a handful of small a sort of SMEs who clearly have this problem sort of up really keen to get access to it. So that's been super positive. Great, great, that's excellent. And it's been excellent to watch the progress from, from my side. Um, on that, um, what, was the, what was the reason for coming to the UCLTF and, and why work with a fund like ours? Yeah, so I think there's a, there's a few different reasons. One, one, honestly, Dave, sort of fully upfront, partly is just sort of the amount of help that you gave. I remember coming to speak to you in January for a cup of coffee at, at Albion's offices and I still had a million and one different ideas and I wasn't sure exactly what direction I was going in. And the fact that you were willing to hear us out and you were clearly cognizant of stage and it wasn't a problem that we had so many different ideas and we were still trying to understand things. You knew what it was like to be an early stage company, that really helped. And then the, the depth of expertise that you clearly showed as well. Um, and you know, getting initial, getting initial capital in early to get off the ground is absolutely essential. Great. Well, it's been, it's been great to be involved in it. I've thoroughly enjoyed every conversation we've had. They've been incredibly stimulating. So um, from my side, also great. Um, thinking about yourselves as a company as you go forward, you've been operating together now for, say, half a year, roughly. What would you describe your kind of strengths as a company? What do you bring as founders? And where are the, where are the areas that you still think you're working on? Well, so for me... Personally, I think our strength is the team and I would love Jordan to jump in here, but like working with Jordan and Peter over the last six months and David and m and 
I'm just so blown away by how talented those guys are. Um, like I, I've obviously worked with them before in research and sort of side projects, but I hadn't really realized until we were working full time together. Um, so yeah, for, for, for me, it's that the fact that we gel well together, but also how talented, particularly sort of on the engineering side and the research side, Jordan Peter blow me away. It's exactly that. Um, I've tried it both ways with a team that isn't so great. Um, we don't get on so well. And then now with this team where I've like, I think whatever we do for 10 years is going to work out and it's going to be fun along the way. Um, it's so much better. Um, so it's the team and that is our strength. And we've got deep expertise in the machine learning space. Um, I'd say perhaps what the areas that we obviously need to work on right now is actually um, taking some of that technical push that we're trying to put on the market and like actually sort of now figure out how do we do sales? How do we, um, how do we market this? And how do we go like, uh, like uh, a distribution strategy, these sorts of things um, we're learning on the way, but the talent well, of the team I would, is- I would say that I still think compared to an equivalent team coming out of university with, like we have surprisingly large amounts of commercial experience compared to the equivalent group of PhDs you might see from elsewhere. Because both Peter and myself have sort of done other startups before Jordan has as well. So none, none of us are first time founders. Um, yeah. I think that makes quite a big difference. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Nice to see a, a lot of founder love there. That's brilliant. Um, <laughs> um, anything that you changed so far? I mean, you haven't, you haven't been around for a long time, huge amounts of regrets, but uh, anything that you would, might do differently if you started, started back in January again? Obviously the one big thing that changed immediately was from all coming in and working in the UCL AI center to quickly being a distributed team. And when COVID hit, um, we just took that on and said, that is how we're going to operate from now on. Um, there's a lot of upsides that we're pushing on and sort of getting in the good processes now. Um, so that works. Um, I think, I don't know if we would have done that straight away, actually. How about you, Reza? Would you have I think without COVID, we wouldn't have become a distributed company. And I'm so yeah. glad we have done because we get, we get together now occasionally, but actually we can still be so productive without having to be in the same room. And that I think is, a, you know, it's a bit of a superpower. Um, in terms of things I might change, I might have launched a little bit sooner. I think we were still quite quick to launch. Like we had a product out within a couple of months of starting, but if we could have gone that even a little bit quicker, because it's been, I hadn't realized how even a small MVP would really make a big difference to sales conversations in terms of the quality of the feedback people give us um, and the ability we're able to incorporate that and really get a sense for how much they actually want this. Because it's very easy in the abstract to say you want something. When you've actually seen it and you have a concrete problem um, and people start inventing use cases once they've seen the tool as well, because suddenly they know what it is and they're like, oh, I could use it for this. I could use it for that, which they can't really do before they've seen it. So maybe building a little bit sooner that said, you know, we still got it out there pretty quick. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I was impressed with how quick it came out. So um, I think no, no complaints there from our side. Um, and um, obviously, you have experience of, of, of us as investors, you'll, uh, you'll be looking for, for more investment in the future. What, um, what makes a good investor from your perspective? What's what are you looking for? So there's a few different things from my perspective, personally. So one I kind of touched on already, which is that sort of an understanding of stage and uh, alignment with our visions to someone who kind of recognizes where we are and how things will change and can kind of has seen it before. Ideally, it would, you know, what would be really good for me is someone who's done it themselves. Like I'd really like to work with someone who's been in the position we've been at some point and knows the challenges we're facing firsthand. Um, and also, if they've seen many, many companies in, in a similar space, so they have that domain expertise, then that's helpful as well, because I think lots of startups fail in the same ways, even if they don't succeed in the same ways. And so being able to sort of point out where the bear traps are. Um, no. yeah. um, the, 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 one of the um, I guess surprising and enjoyable things of actually having an investor is so how quickly you become aligned and actually having them on your side to help out. So um, that's something like I didn't think I appreciated beforehand. I thought mostly just investments, you just take kind of money and they probably force you to do and it like um, potentially force you to do things you weren't, like, aren't quite aligned with. Um, but it's great to have like a stage aware investor that you can then, um, uh, yeah, just like feedback ideas on um, sort of be more open with. Um, 
that's the sort of investor. Yeah, trust, trust is another big one. Like having an investor that I believe I can be completely open with about what's going well and what also isn't going well. Um, so that we can get genuine feedback and support rather than feeling like we might need to hide the bad things because there are bad, bad things in every startup. Um, so that's really important. And um, oh, we've only been working together for six months, but is there any advice you would give, give us as a fund, kind of how, how we could help more or do things differently? Well, that's a great question. Um, it's a difficult one because we have so little to compare against. You're the, you're the, you know, the only fund we've worked with so far as a team. Um, but honestly, it's felt to me that it's been really great. Um, I'm trying to think of some kind of constructive criticism that I'm struggling with. I guess one thing is that um, to me, Albion is Dave, um, and I don't really see what else the um, the VC is actually providing to us. I mean, your advice and you're the point of contact, and it's fantastic. Um, I'm wondering if there is um, other expertise within the groups that like would yes. be helpful. Yes, there is. And actually, I've been a bit reticent to, to I, should, I should be getting you more involved with some of our, um, some of our sort of cross fertilization stuff. So I will, I'll do that um, as, a, as an outcome from this. So that's, that's helpful. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, look, um, thank you for spending the time. It's been, it's been wonderful to catch up. Uh, and it's been a really enjoyable journey uh, as, part of the, as part of the Human Loop team so far. So looking forward to more future success, guys. Thanks very much, Dave. Cool. Thank you.